Picture this, a MotoGP bike hurtling at over 200 miles per hour suddenly slams on its brakes, coming to almost a dead stop in the blink of an eye. It looks terrifying, yet almost routine for professional riders. But something's odd here. These super bikes don't use ABS. No anti-lock braking system, no electronic helpers. So how on earth do they manage to stop faster and more safely than your average car, which usually relies heavily on ABS? The ABS paradox. Most road cars today come with ABS as standard, and for good reason, it's a lifesaver. Whether you're driving a basic hatchback or a luxury sedan, ABS is built to save lives. Slam on the brakes too hard in your car, and ABS kicks in, modulating pressure, preventing skids, and helping you steer while slowing down. It's great for unpredictable drivers. But MotoGP riders, they aren't unpredictable. These athletes are trained to a level that borders on superhuman. They don't want ABS intervening. It's not just about braking power. It's about feel, timing, and precision. A BS can actually interrupt that. It's like trying to paint a masterpiece while someone else keeps grabbing your brush. Also, ABS systems are reactive. They only activate when a wheel is about to lock up. MotoGP riders, on the other hand, ride right on the edge of grip, but rarely cross the line. They don't want a system stepping in after things go wrong. They prevent things from going wrong in the first place. That's why ABS isn't just unnecessary in MotoGP, it's a potential liability. It removes control from the one person who knows best, the rider. Let's talk about something you can't capture in stats or spec sheets, feel. That incredibly subtle fingertip level feedback a MotoGP rider gets from the front brake lever, it's not just useful, it's a lifeline. In MotoGP, braking isn't a binary action. It's not brake or no brake. It's a constantly evolving squeeze, a dance of pressure and micro corrections. Riders modulate brake force by feel. Every millimeter of lever movement tells them something. How warm the tire is, how much grip they've got, how loaded the front suspension is, even how much weight has shifted forward. That kind of sensitivity is priceless. Now picture this. Imagine trying to play a grand piano while wearing thick winter gloves. That's what ABS does to brake feel. It dulls it, it interrupts it. For normal road riders, that's fine, even life-saving. But for a MotoGP rider, that disruption could cost them a corner, a lap, or a race. These riders don't just react, they anticipate. They train for front-end slides. They practice braking while leaned over. They learn how to catch a tire before it fully lets go. These aren't panic moves, they're rehearsed. Precision under pressure is what separates the elite from the rest. Here's something wild. MotoGP riders usually break using just one or two fingers. That's all it takes when you've got surgical control. Try pulling that off with ABS constantly cutting in. It'd feel like someone else was randomly grabbing your brake mid-corner, braking at over 1.5 G while leaned into a turn with nothing but your fingers as your gauge. That's where feel beats force every time. MotoGP riders don't want interference. They want total connection because at 300 kilometers per hour, clarity is survival. Now here's where MotoGP takes things to another level. Carbon carbon brakes. These aren't your typical steel discs. These are space age materials, the same kind you'd find on a Formula One car, and they behave in a completely different way. For starters, carbon brakes don't even work properly when they're cold. Below 200 degrees Celsius, they're spongy, slippery, almost useless. It's only once they reach 300 degrees Celsius and beyond that they bite. And when they bite, they bite hard. That's why you'll see riders weaving or dragging their brakes on outlaps to get those temperatures up. Once in the heat zone, these brakes offer insane stopping power with almost no fade. They're light, they're durable, and they allow MotoGP riders to brake later and harder into corners. But carbon brakes come with their own set of rules. They don't forgive rough inputs. You can't just slam the lever and pray. You have to warm them, feel them, and time every squeeze. And they're completely impractical on road bikes. Try using carbon discs in daily traffic. They'll never heat up enough to be safe. So while carbon brakes are a big reason MotoGP bikes stop faster than cars, they demand skill, awareness, and experience. In the wrong hands, they're dangerous, but in the right hands, they're weapons. 
Rain doesn't just make MotoGP trickier, it turns the entire race into a different sport. On a dry track, carbon brakes are kings. But once the skies open up, those high-performance discs become a liability. Why? Because carbon brakes rely on heat to work properly. Below 200 to 250 degrees Celsius, they're unpredictable, slippery, inconsistent, and dangerously slow to respond. In the rain, there's simply not enough friction to keep them in their ideal temperature window. So riders switch to steel rotors, the same kind you'd find on high-end road bikes. Steel heats up faster, offers a more consistent bite in cooler conditions, and is much more reliable when the track is wet. But swapping materials is only half the story. The real difference maker, the rider. In the wet, everything slows down. Brake zones stretch out, lean angles reduce, and the throttle gets gentler. Riders shift their weight differently. They brake earlier. And crucially, they start relying much more on the rear brake. That's right, watch closely and you'll often see a rider subtly dragging the rear brake mid-corner. It's not a mistake, it's a calculated move. That gentle pressure helps settle the bike, control pitch, and keep the rear from sliding out as they tip in. It's finesse on wet tarmac. Then there's engine braking. A built-in slowdown system MotoGP bikes allow riders to customize by adjusting how much the engine resists when off throttle. Riders can bleed speed more smoothly without grabbing the front brake too hard. Now you'd think ABS might help here, but even in the rain, it can become a liability. When traction is low, ABS might cut in too abruptly, robbing the rider of control or causing an unexpected pulse that unsettles the chassis. In wet racing, it's still human instincts and judgment, not automation, that win the day. Why MotoGP doesn't need ABS yet? Let's not pretend tech isn't catching up, because it is. Racing-grade ABS systems are evolving fast. They're getting more compact, more responsive, and more intelligent. But when it comes to MotoGP, they're still not there. Not yet. In MotoGP, every fraction of a second counts. Every extra gram of weight is a disadvantage. Every added sensor, wire, or component is one more thing that could go wrong at 350 kilometers per hour. So even if ABS works great in theory, in practice, it introduces complexity, exactly what teams spend millions trying to eliminate. But it's not just about weight or reliability. The real reason MotoGP resists ABS is something deeper. It's about philosophy. This is a sport built on mastery of chaos. Riders don't just tolerate risk. They train to ride it like a wave. They slide the front tire and recover. They break on the edge of traction. They feel every twitch and pulse through their fingers and toes. A B, S, that's a layer between them and the limit, and they don't want that. Imagine you're battling for the lead in the final laps. You dive into turn one, perfectly judging grip, then ABS kicks in unexpectedly, cuts brake pressure for a split second, and you overshoot. Position gone. Maybe the race too. Riders would rather risk a crash they control than lose a race to a system making the wrong call. Now sure, some other series, like World SBK or Long Distance Endurance Races, have started to play with advanced ABS for safety. And yeah, if the tech becomes absolutely seamless, maybe MotoGP will adopt it. MotoGP versus Cars, the breaking showdown. Let's throw down some numbers, because on paper, they tell a wild story. Take a Porsche 911 GT3. It's a weapon of a car, track bred, aerodynamically tuned, sitting on fat, sticky tires. It can break from 100 kilometers per hour to zero in about 30 meters. That's impressive, until you compare it to a MotoGP bike. A MotoGP machine with less than 160 kilograms of bike plus rider can do that same stop in about 26 meters. Let that sink in. A two-wheeled machine with no seat belts, no roll cage, no ABS safety net, stopping faster than one of the best track cars in the world. Now push that to extremes. From 300 kilometers per hour, MotoGP riders can bring their bikes down to corner entry speeds in roughly 275 to 300 meters. That's a deceleration of over 1.5 G and it happens in just four to five seconds. So how's that possible? It's not just about the brakes. Sure, MotoGP bikes use high-performance carbon-carbon rotors that bite like hell once they're hot. But stopping power in MotoGP is a combination of systems, body position, 
weight transfer, engine braking, aerodynamics, and most critically, the rider's finesse. Now contrast this with a car. Drivers sit still. The car's suspension and electronics handle everything. Sure, cars have advanced tech, but there's no human adaptability mid-corner. MotoGP riders, on the other hand, lean, tuck, rise, and shift with almost surgical precision. Every movement affects how the bike behaves. That's the magic of MotoGP, a seamless fusion of rider, machine, aerodynamics, and grip. Every piece of the puzzle working together to slow down from terrifying speeds with no ABS, no backup, and no room for error, just pure control. In MotoGP, braking isn't just about slowing down, it's a weapon. Riders use it to attack into corners, defend positions, and control the race flow. A perfectly timed braking move can win a lap. A misstep, it's game over. And they do it all without ABS. No electronics stepping in, no safety cushion, just a front brake lever, one or two fingers, and a brain that's reading the tarmac millisecond by millisecond. Braking in MotoGP is a strange mix of violence and grace. Riders are slamming the brakes at over 1.5 G, shifting their body weight, modulating pressure, all while flying at 300 plus kilometers per hour. It's a dance built on years of training, feel, and instinct. One mistake and the cost is high, but that's what makes it so pure. The trust between rider and machine has to be absolute. Every movement, every micro adjustment is critical. There's no backup system, no override. So next time you watch a rider dive into turn one at 330 kilometers per hour, remember they're doing it to feel alone. No ABS, no second chances, just raw skill, split second decisions, and the courage to break where most would freeze. That's MotoGP. If you love this kind of high-speed insight, hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dives into the world's fastest sport, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a moment.